Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to the debut episode of The Sabbath Stones. This is the show we're going to be doing periodically throughout the year. It's all about Black Sabbath. It's all about Pardo and Aloe. Welcome, Mr. Chris Aloe. What's happening, my friend? Thank you, Pete. Thanks for having me, as always. Uh, it's a pleasure, and nothing more than I would rather do than then speak Black Sabbath with you. We could we talked about this for a while. Yep. Um, I could talk Sabbath with you all day long. So it's uh, always a pleasure. And this, this is a great idea. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Sabbath shows always do well here on the channel. Uh, I have to sometimes stop myself from bringing up Sabbath in almost every episode on every show across the channel. So I figure, well, why don't we just dedicate uh, a show to Sabbath for however as often we want to do it as long as we want to do it, whatever. And Chris is absolutely hundred percent right. You know, a lot of times when Chris and I hang out, we wind up talking about black Sabbath. And so it's like, well, why don't we just record these conversations and show off some stuff and every episode will be a different sort of Sabbath topic. Uh, and we figured we'd start it off with, because we've both been buying a lot of them lately, uh, Sabbath bootlegs, like these CDs or whatever that come out that are from classic broadcasts or just, someone recorded them whether it be the, the the sound booth or audience or whatever and they've someone has released them you know my buddy ken golden owns the laser's edge and from in the proxy he likes to call these gray area releases right because they're not really official but they they're out there they they show up you see them online somewhere you buy them and then like a month later you you tell someone about it and they go to order like oh it's not available anymore yeah. there's a reason why right so yeah, yeah they're, they're limited runs um they're the quality is better than ever and the purchase price is better than it's ever pretty cheap, right? i mean yeah. i remember pete in the late 80s early 90s when you know bootleg cds were a thing they were like 30 35 dollars and you know the the whole thing with buying these gray area records you know you never know how they're gonna how the quality is gonna be until yeah, you get it home so to, to shell out that much money and, you know, thankfully now with the internet, again, the, with the, me and you are the old men speaking here, but, you know, to, cause to take us back, cause some of the stuff I have is, is older, like, like I'm sure you have, you know, way back when it's, it's a different world. Now a band does a concert and during the concert, we could watch it on YouTube because somebody's recording it and streaming it. Live stream. You know, Back back in the day, if you or I wanted to hear a live show, um, we, we had to buy a bootleg. That was it, or trade it with somebody. And to me, I know I've pretty much always felt, as in rock and roll, I don't know, I'm biased like you are, but I've always felt that Black Sabbath was the most important band for bootlegs because there have been so many singers. Every time there's a singer, you know, every version of Paranoid now sounds completely different. Every version of War Pigs. Plus, you know, for if it wasn't for the bootlegs, you know, before some of the reissues, we never would have heard of Dave Walker or Jeff Fenholt or Ray Gillen or Rob Halford fronting Black Sabbath. Yeah. You know, there was Tony Iommi did a whole record with Glenn Hughes that never came out until the bootleg came out. And I've always said that's why the the depth sessions was released similar to kisses carnival of souls it was so heavily bootlegged they were like oh fuck it just put it out because you know there is interest so and people you know bought both versions yeah and you know another aspect too uh the importance of black sabbath as a band especially in the uh, in the 70s throughout the 70s and into most of the 80s you know other than live evil and then eventually live at last we became past lives not a band with a lot of live albums from no. the classic era it, it's and not really, like we had purple. nothing throughout the 70s absolutely it's not like purple who like you sneeze and there's a god only knows how many i don't even know how many live records yeah that guy have a ton of them so yeah right. so we had That's to okay. wait for all of these bootlegs start coming out to hear all these shows that were recorded by various people for whether it be uh you know radio broadcast or whether you know they were recorded at the mixing desk or whether you know i mean it, audience recordings audience recordings people snuck in and this is this blows my mind chris oh yeah as, as two guys who started going into shows in the 80s you could just walk in with a tape recorder excellent point square Pete. garden in 1982 you couldn't do it Again, being, you know, me and you being the old guys in the room, it's mind blowing sometimes how today you're allowed to bring in your phone, which you can record audio and video in color and in 4K. 
But you're right. I mean, I remember one time I tried to sneak in a tape recorder to see Metallica in 1986 and security found it and they said, nope, throw it in your car. I mean, you could not do it back. You couldn't bring a camera back then. I mean, it was it was taboo. Yeah, yeah. But it happened. Yeah, somehow some people did it. And some of the recordings that these people made are amazing. I have one that I think I, I talked about it with you a while ago. I still can't believe it's existed and that it turned up after 50 some odd years. It's it's crazy to think that there is still stuff out there that's still being discovered. Yeah. So, you know, if you're a uh, collector of this sort of thing and you're intrigued by hearing Sabbath recordings from throughout the years, you know, specifically the, the 70s and the 80s, uh, I, I don't know what would you, it, it's tough to say, well, you just got to keep your eyes open because like we mentioned earlier, things pop up here and there through various online sellers that you might work with, but then yes. like you blink and they're gone. So they're it's gone. almost like only minimal, whatever the runs are, a couple hundred, a thousand, you know, they make as many as they can, they sell them. And then as soon as someone in, in, in official land catches wind, they put a stop on it and then they're gone. So if you buy them, you got to buy them quick. That's why yes. most of the time, if you see something you really want to hear, don't sleep on it because you, you may never see it again, or you'll have to wait till some other one of these little uh, companies go and, and release it uh, at a later date. So Absolutely, Pete. And I, I know somebody had asked us, uh, we were discussing something along the lines of, of, of bootleg recordings on uh, one of the, they put in the comments on one of the Sea of Tranquility episodes, I don't remember which one, but asking like, well, how do you know which ones are good? And I had said, you know, what, what I do nowadays, because we can do this, we, we couldn't do this way back when, but you know, you, once you know the date of the particular show, look it up on YouTube and play it on YouTube, and if it sounds good, then okay, then maybe it's worth your fifteen or twenty bucks to buy it. Because yeah. again, this was something that uh, you know we we didn't have access to back then. And you know, listen, if you don't have the money and you just want to listen to it on YouTube, it's there. There's more bootlegs of like let's I don't know other bands, but Sabbath. Oh my God, there's more stuff on there than we could possibly listen to in a day. Yeah, for sure. And in most cases, what you'll hear on YouTube is going to be of a little lesser quality than what you might get when you actually get the yes. or vinyl or whatever it is that you Excellent point. end up yep. purchasing. Uh, in most cases, that's usually, uh, you know, they, they go when they, because when they go to release some of these things, they they try to clean them up as best as they can. I'm sure yeah. that they're, they're not spending a lot of money on that, right? But uh, generally speaking, they sound a bit better than what you'll, you'll hear online. So um and with all that being said so chris and i both uh brought some stuff to show and tell today he's i think he's got a way more than i do but um so yeah i'll have chris kind of kick us off show a few talk a little bit about them and okay. maybe, well i think we'll, we'll the ones that we really recommend we'll kind of really highlight and say these are worth seeking uh you know these some of these shows are really worth seeking if you could find them okay well i i started pete you've got a couple of years on me as far as sabbath fandom so i started really getting into sabbath in like 83 84 so i, I actually found i have a, a ton more sabbath cassette bootlegs i only found three of them but i was glad the one i that i did find because it was the very first bootleg i ever bought and the, the story behind it true story um I had saved up some money. I was 15, I just turned 15 and I was going, I was excited because I was going to my first concert, which was Ozzy Osbourne on the Ultimate Sin Tour in 1986. It was me and three friends. So I went to town, I bought the four tickets and there was a flea market because again, you know, being the old men in the room, you know, bootlegs were gray area. Some record stores sold them. Yeah. You could also buy them in the mail but it was one of those things like you would see them at like record conventions and like flea markets. And there was a guy that had like five tables of bootlegs and a ton of Sabbath. And I was like, oh my God, but I just bought four Ozzy Osbourne tickets. So I didn't have a lot of money, but he sold me on buying this particular cassette tape. Cause he's like, Hey, this has the new black Sabbath singer, Ray Gillen and you want to hear them don't you and i was like oh hell yeah so this was the this was the very first bootleg cassette tape the first bootleg i ever bought 
It was Black Sabbath at Montreal, April 1st, 1986, which I think was like Ray Gillen's second show, and it was a, a pretty good recording. Um, the other two that I found that were next to it were interesting. These were both from the Seventh Star Tour, and oh, oh these are all on CD. Um, this one was uh, Sabbath at the Meadowlands from March 24th, 1986, which was Glenn Hughes fronting the band. Is that that um, show? Yeah, I was there. And that was, I believe, that was the last one that Glenn actually sang. Yes. Because then I have the Worcester '86 show, which was the one that Glenn was there. And yeah, this was the thing. They were, it was all, lots of times it was just handwritten. This was the one Glenn Hughes was there, um, but uh, Jeff Nichols actually did the vocals and, and Glenn just, just mimed it um, from, from what I remember. Um, but I yeah, think that Montreal show, I think if I'm not mistaken, that was uh, Ray's first show or maybe second. I, th I think it was the second. He might have had one before. It was but within the same week. Yes. From the yeah, show that I was at. Yeah. I think they canceled one show <clears throat> and then he was on. And uh, I also rebought this show on VHS because there's a decent V. And I think it's, there's only two uh, VHS shows shot on the Seven Star Tour. One with Glenn Hughes and, and one with Ray Gillen. But those, um, this one is an interesting one. This is a... 1981 uh, 1980 bootleg rather i should say you um you had done something recently uh where ralph had showed off a misfits bootleg uh called night of the living dead which i do have and it was interesting because his the artwork was kind of cut and pasted together and he was like that's pretty rare and it, it certainly is this one is the only record like that that i, I ever bought and it was uh it's black sabbath from Rhode Island, um, from the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island in 1980, the Heaven and Hell tour. But I don't know if you could tell, I mean, this is all done by hand, the like cut out of stuff. And, you know, this is all just taped to it. And it's, it's not a great recording. And, you know, bootleg vinyl uh, was expensive back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's interesting because bootleg vinyl because vinyl had such a resurgence now the packaging is amazing you know and you go you can go to like rock fantasy and they have an incredible selection of bootleg vinyl every the, the packaging is not like this it looks it looks amazing and the thing that that's stinks, got the homemade diy look right yeah oh, totally and the thing that stinks vinyl is so popular now they don't even do the cds anymore now they're just doing vinyl i'm like ah uh but let's see what else what else do i have i found a whole stack I mean, this, these aren't all of them, but these are just some of my Ozzy uh, lineup ones. This is the one that was, it's a shocker. I mentioned it not that long ago. It's called Holy Grail. Um, I got this maybe like six months or a year ago. And it's a shocker because it's from, it was recorded in November of 1969. And it's got songs like Let Me Love You, Song for Jim, and Early Morning School. And um, it's in Scotland. The quality is not bad. I had to put my glasses on because I'm, I'm so old. I can't read the back of the CD otherwise. But what was nice was when they, when a guy taped it, and then when they transferred it to tape, um, they did one version straight to tape, and then they did another version where they did EQ it slightly. So there's two separate discs. But just like you said, Pete, I, I bought this, and I was like, holy crap. I, I can't believe it sounds this good for 1969. I went to buy another one from the same vendor, gone. And I, I remember when you got that, you told me about it, and I went to yeah. go buy it, and it was gone. And I was like, All right, so I never got it. Yeah, they, they, these, these games. This is the newer one. I think you might have one of these. Um, this is Syracuse, 1976, yeah. from December 12th. Uh, this is a good one. I think, yep, oh, there you go. That's a, This is another new one um this is pittsburgh 1978 um this one has dirty women rock and roll doctor fm broadcast this is pretty good yeah this is from 2021 I have that on this three disc set here ah it's yes back. see i didn't buy that one because i think i have the other recordings yep. uh this is another one that's that's 2022 uh fm broadcast from zip city records this is from, uh, it's a Swiss broadcast. It says Lausanne, 1970. 
but I, I'm looking at the track listing. I'm like, all right, is this is this the is this the one from the TV show from that Rock Remembers 1970? April 29th, 1970. Well, from a live FM broadcast yeah. at Electric Circus. Um, because it's got it's got Blue Coat Man, and I don't right. think it's on the TV show. Yeah, so this is different then. And this one, for folks who like uh, the jam and stuff, this has a 32-minute yes. version of warning on here. So loads of solos. This is probably Chris's least favorite of all of them. But uh, <laughs> what's cool about it is it's got a really ripping version of Fairies Wear Boots on here, which I think is really cool. And NIB is excellent on here as well. So definitely worth uh, checking out. And what's what's really frustrating about a lot of these is, like, you'll look at, like, the photographs that they have. They don't match at all. Like, you look at this. This is obviously 69 or early 70. Then you look at the back, and that's a, probably a picture from 72, 73 easily. So it's just, they're, they're, it's all over the map as far as the packaging goes. But Pete, yeah. excellent point. I was going to, I was going to say that there is, I think the bootleggers are better now than they were, but they're still not great as far as that, because here is a perfect example. And I think I bought this just because it was cheap. Um, this one's called Metal Mess. There's no date on here, but I believe this is the, uh, I think this might be the, looking at the set list, I think it might be the California Jam. But if you, and this this happened to me as a kid, as I have another Sabbath record, which I couldn't find, where um, I looked at the cover and I'm like, wow. I was like, and again, there was no internet back then. So I'm like, wait, this has Ronnie James Dio singing Snowblind and Supernaut? No, it just had Ronnie James Dio on the cover. And then when I got the record home, it was a Sabbath show from like 76. But so here is the Metal Mess CD, which I think is California Jam 1972. And look who's on the cover. Yeah, something's wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the track list on that? Uh, let's see. Tomorrow's Dream, Sweet Leaf, Killing Yourself to Live, War Pigs, Snowblind, Sabra Cadabra, Supernaut, Iron Man. Did they do Iron Man at the Cal Jam? I don't remember. Yep. Then it says Improvisation, Sabra Cadabra, Paranoid Children of the Grave. Yep. Okay. I have that as well. And that's also on this set. So okay. yeah, that, that was from, That's the Cal Jam? Uh, that's, yeah, Ontario Speedway, April 6th, 1974. Gotcha. Yep. All right yeah. then. Ontario Speedway. Yeah. It's fact. It's funny because I almost, when I was ordering a bunch of these a couple months back, I almost ordered that one that you have or something similar to it. Yeah. But then I went and double checked this one because that's a tricky thing. So this one I got because I had three shows on it. But then I almost ordered the uh, the Pittsburgh show. Actually, no, I did. I ordered the Pittsburgh show on a separate one. Dave LaGreca now owns it. I gave it to him. And I almost ordered the uh, Ontario Speedway California Jam on a separate one. Then I looked, I double checked the, the back of this, and I'm like, I already have that. It's a, it's just all included on here. Ah. So that so all of these you could find separately because also on this one here, which is called Transmission Impossible, uh, this also has the Bremen Germany 1970 uh, four tracks from there, and Fillmore West November 1970 on disc one. So you got some early December, uh, early November set 1970. Well, early fall 1970 stuff on disc one from both Germany and the Fillmore. And then disc two is California Jam. Disc three is the Pittsburgh show from 78. So this is, and this was cheap. Yes. Was like 10, 12 bucks, something like that. Really well, dirt it's, cheap. It's funny. good. Yeah. You, it's funny. You pulling out that one. I'm looking at all these that I pulled. I go, oh crap. I forgot that box that I got. There's one I bought off Amazon. I think it's a six CD box set. Yeah, a couple months ago. I remember when you got that. Yeah, It was like 30 bucks. And, you know, I had one or two of them, one or two of the shows. And it had, um, I want to say it was like one Ozzy set, like two Dio's, an Ian Gillen, and, a, and at least a, one Tony Martin. And 30 bucks. And the quality was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you know, back then, we like this, this was probably a $30 CD 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So with with technology, yeah, the it's definitely uh, so much so much more affordable now. If you wanted to, this one is September nineteen seventy eight, called uh, Black Sabbath, on a one for the nose, and I think I bought this one, yeah, because it has Shockwave. This was on the um, Never Say Die tour, and uh, they didn't they didn't do Shockwave often, even though it's not my 
my favorite record. It's um, it was cool to have. Now this is now there is of course some bootleg stuff that we've purchased that gets negated over the years. Like here is a a bootleg CD I have of the quad mix of Paranoid, which um, was kind of stupid to buy because it's a quad mix down mixed to two channel um, stereo. But of course the the real quad mix was finally released re-released on blu-ray um not that long ago this this one is was is a favorite quality is pretty good um this one is black sabbath ozzy rules budapest which is a recording from uh june 3rd 1998 and the funny thing is it's got a picture of bill ward on the back but it's actually Vinny Apice on drums. Go figure, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I remember one of the times I interviewed Vinny Apice asking him about this, and he was like, yeah, you know, it was crazy because since they had Ozzy back, they were doing all this stuff like Into the Void and Electric Funeral. He's like, I didn't know how to play any of those. He's like, I had to, I had to learn how to play all those songs because Bill Ward was sick. Um, let, me, I'll, I'll, let me finish the Aussie ones and then you, you take over. This is a newer one too. Um, this is Montro 1970. So it's got the FM broadcast from Montro Casino in Switzerland. And then it's got uh, one, two, three, four tracks from the BBC sessions from 1970, which is on everything. That includes, uh, you know, Blue Sway Shoes. And Sabbath, I think, even did a four track EP of that, I think. I think that's a legit one, um, but then it's got the two Earth demos, the Rebel and When I Came Down. For those wondering, that is the same Montreux Casino uh, that was burned down with the Frank Zappa concert that Deep Purple sings about in Smoke on the Water. Smoke on the Water. Just a year or two later, right? So, yeah. Okay, so you were talking about uh, uh, Sabbath Live at the Fillmore, 1970. I, yep. get, I guess I have that one. I forgot about that one. My version's called Black Knight in San Francisco. And I'm wondering if you have if we have the same tracks or if, if there's more or less. So on mine, it's got yeah, Paranoid, yeah. NIB, War Pigs, Black Sabbath, Iron Man, Behind the Wall of Sleep, Hand of Doom, Fairies Wear Boots, and Wicked World. Yeah. Now, but what was your first track? Uh, Paranoid. All right. So I have, oh, there's four tracks before it, but I think these are the BBC tracks. Because it says Black Sabbath, Blue Suede Shoes, Paranoid, and Iron Man. Okay, so that's that's exactly what I have here. Those It's, it's listed as the Bremen, Germany tracks from uh, 25th yep. of May and December September 26th. So essentially, it's the exact same disc as what yep. I have. Great. See, yeah, that's, that's, a... that's what you have to deal with, folks, when you're, yes. when you're shopping for this stuff. you got to be very careful because you could very easily buy the same stuff over and over again. 100%, Pete, because, I mean, listen, this is the you know, the underground. So yeah, you don't know what you, this is, I think this is the, you and I talked about this. This is, I think the greatest single Black Sabbath set that the original lineup ever played. Uh, Sabbath at Convention Hall, Asbury Park, New Jersey, August 5th, 1975. Um, but I believe, right, this is on the, this is the bootleg version. It's but on the this box was, set of yes. uh, Sabotage. Right? Sabotage, I was going to say, this was on the, on the reissue box set of Sabotage. That's really oh, good. Great, really. I think the greatest set the original lineup ever did. And then the other two Aussie ones I have. Um, live at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, 1978. All right, I think I, I, think I have that one already. You got it and twice. <laughs> this, and then, no surprise. And this was, have, also has four tracks from the Philadelphia Spectrum, 1975. Ah, kill, which is Killing Yourself to Live, Hole in the Sky, Snowblind, and War Pigs. So well, wonder, that's worthwhile for that. Yes, but I'm, I was wondering, are those the tracks then that are on, um, what is it, live, not live at last, Past Lives? Could, could be. I think so. Past Lives is great, by the way. That's great. That's, yeah. Ah, how funny is that? This is another one, California Jam, 1974. So, yeah, this one's called Tomorrow's History. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's my Ozzy section. All right, I'll finish up the Aussie stuff. Uh, I got a couple here, and then we'll go. All right, so this is from, Jesus, I don't even know where this is from. There's, like, no information, uh, but it is from a radio broadcast in 1970. 
I got this from uh, from Ken Golden a number of months ago. It's just called On Air. And it's got Black Sabbath, War Pigs, Fairies Wear Boots, Behind the Wall of Sleep, Black Sabbath, Paranoid Iron Man, and Blue Suede Shoes. So That sounds like the, the TV show. Yes, you might be correct. Whatever that was called, I forget. Yes. Um, this one is terrific. Uh, and I, I don't even know where I saw this, but I jumped all over it. It's called Eternal Void of Doom definitive edition and this was recorded in april 18th 1971 somewhere in europe i don't know it's really good uh the, the set list is nib war pigs black sabbath iron man into the void paranoid and fairies wear boots uh copenhagen denmark from the oh, falconer wow. theater copenhagen denmark april 18th 1971 really heavy um Really good recording. One of one of the, my favorites that I've gotten uh, fairly recently. I'll have to get that one then, Pete. I yeah, really good. And it's probably called something else now. But if I were right. you, just go search for the April 18th, 1971 Denmark show. I'm sure you'll right. find another version of it. But it's a great, great, great concert. And I would say some of these are available on Amazon. I've noticed in yeah. recent years, so many bootlegs from sabbath and priest and maiden that are on now like you said they're really gray area because they're factory press cds they sound great yep they're just not authorized by the band yeah yeah not at all cool all right uh i guess we'll move on to the 80s then sure yeah uh, um let's see what i have i know i have a couple others um that i didn't bring but these are the two the two newest ones i think you have these as well um, this one is uh, Black Sabbath, Heaven in Hartford. This is the Connecticut broadcast from 1980. Uh, this is from, um, God, what does it say? Smoking Records, but yeah, it's a 2022 copyright. And it's, um, it's Sabbath on the Heaven and Hell tour. Really good recording. Now, some of these tracks are on the reissue of Heaven and Hell. Yep. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yep. and uh, it's it's great because it's a a full complete set um, from the um, from the Heaven and Hell tour, and you know it's one of the only places you can get where you can hear. It's not my you know I don't I don't like it that much, but it's got Ronnie Ronnie James Dio singing uh, Sweet Leaf. But you know, overall, it's this is a very good um, FM broadcast recording. Good stuff. And this is from the uh, similar, it looks like it's the same company, but, and it could be, this one says Golden Rain. Uh, this is um, Black Sabbath, Tokyo Heaven. Um, and bef before I bought this one, I remember talking to you about this one. Uh, this is Sabbath. They did, I think, four nights in Tokyo in 1980 on the Heaven and Hell tour. Again, they do Sweet Leaf. They do Lady Evil um if i'm not mistaken this is vinnie apathy in the band yep. but they had to cut the set short because tony iomi was was sick i think he had food poisoning or something so they didn't finish the set the interesting thing i have a cassette bootleg from one of the other nights and it's super echoey it's one of the most unique sabbath bootlegs that i ever i guess wherever the guy was in the venue that he recorded it had a lot of echo um but i was pleased to to hear that this this did not have that, and it's a, it's a very good recording. I I believe this is an audience recording. Yeah, it's really good, and and don't and it's it's. I remember when I first got this, I was kind of confused because you look at the the front, and I believe this is from very early in the tour, and I'm pretty sure that's what Bill Ward on drums. And you look at yes. the back, and there's Vinny, and if you look at the track list, it says drum solo with credit to Ward, and I'm like. So who the fuck is playing drums on this now? But it's clearly Vinny when you listen to it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But a great, great set list. You know, all the classics are on here. Plus you got, like you said, uh, Sweet Leaf and IBs on here. It's always cool hearing uh, Dio sing some of those old Ozzy classics. There's plenty of them. Yeah, it's a good one. Absolutely. And, you know, I know you and I have talked about it before. I always prefer, you know, with, with bootlegs, just like how I prefer live records. I, I want the whole show, you know, fr from start to finish. I, I hate when it's, you know, just part of a show, like even on that, that heaven and hell uh, reissue, they took, you know, half of a show with Vinnie Apice and half of a show with Bill Ward. I'm just like, ah, you just, just, just do one whole show. I, I hate cutting and pasting. Yep. This is one I, I got from Europe, but it's, um, it's an FM recording. Um, from what I remember, this is, um, this is called Black Sabbath, Black Bloody Black but it's an FM recording of Sabbath from Boston, 1992, 
on the uh, Dehumanizer tour. And this is really, this has been bootlegged a million times under a, a different, a whole bunch of titles. And um, this is one that gets brought up a lot. And it's a, um, it's a four disc set. And this was, this was released um, after Cozy Powell died. And it's my understanding that his girlfriend took all these audio cassettes that Cozy Powell had and they made bootleg albums in Japan. And I, I bought a bunch of Rainbow and Ingve Momstein bootlegs. And this one is a four box set called Reincarnation. Um, and I believe you can get it under uh, under different titles. It's number, this is number 144 out of 300, like that means anything. But it's um, it's got a, sh a set from the Headless Cross, bunch of live tracks from Tear, and then it's got a whole disc of studio rehearsals for Dehumanizer with Cozy Powell uh, with a bunch of unreleased tracks. And disc three is Geezer Butler demos and then more uh, Dehumanizer demos and then a whole bunch of uh, forbidden rough mixes. So it's a really interesting set. Um, some of the unreleased tracks I think one was called Bad Blood. They're not, they don't have names on here on this version. Um, but some of the tracks that they cut for Dehumanizer were not bad. Uh, and it's interesting. It's always interesting to hear the, the work in progress versions yeah, of, yeah, sure. of them. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's an interesting one that I have. And I, I know I have more Ronnie stuff, but that's, I guess that's all I grabbed. How about a little Ian Gillum? So oh, absolutely. This is uh, the Massachusetts broadcast, 1983. Born Again Tour called Deep Black. It's pretty damn terrific, actually. And this is also uh, oh, it's funny how a lot of these, they're, they're by different uh, different companies releasing them, but they all look very similar, like the way the lettering is on the back and then the way they have the, you know, they're all set up. But uh, this is a, a full show recorded at the, uh, at the Centrum in Worcester, Massachusetts, November 14th, uh, or November 4th, 1983. And this was a live FM broadcast. And it's basically the, a snapshot of the Born Again tour. You got Children of the Grave, Hotline, War Pigs, Iron Man, Zero the Hero, Heaven and Hell, Tony's Guitar Soul, Digital Bitch, Black Sabbath, Smoke on the Water, and Paranoid. So uh, the only thing you don't get on here that probably would be expected is you, there's no um, Disturbing the Priest on here. And there's no uh, Born Again, the title track, which I believe is on the bonus disc of the remaster of born again that came out a number of years ago you get the live album they played it there at what was that that was at uh was that castle donnington or one of those uh, open it was the reading festival. Reading festival yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so a little bit of a different set list there compared to this one but still this is pretty cool and i think you get one or two tracks that's on here that they didn't play there so this is uh, quite good and gillen sounds great on this pete don't be surprised i bought that one i just listened to it it's I lost it in the room somewhere, but the recording on that is fantastic. Yeah, really good. That right? one sounds like because it's got I don't I don't remember if there's an intro, but there's certainly an outro. And you know, back in the day, I don't know how they do it now, but back in the day when they would record a band to be broadcast, they would they actually pressed it on vinyl and sent it to the local radio stations to play. And to me, the quality is so good, and because it's got that outro of a nameless dj being like you just listen to black sabbath you know on the morgan tour sponsored by coca-cola blah, blah, you know, like the quality on that thing is fantastic because yeah. i had a an audio cassette of that same show and that cd blows it away yeah. highest recommendation for that one yeah it's a really good if you're a fan of the born again album uh this is definitely yeah. you want to hear and i mean jesus christ ian gillen is just shrieking constantly the whole thing I, you listening to it i thought of you i'm like jesus christ pete's pete's idea is right he had to blow out his voice storm just in the middle of nothing he's just rah, rah. Like, what are you doing at it's the like, end of the show right he's like so before they i think before they started playing paranoid or something like that is that everybody doing yeah, yeah. he's just, just over and over again every song yeah yeah it's un unbelievable i was blown away when i listened to it the other day i'm like Holy crap, this is good. Yeah, of course I meant to show it off. This one is one um, that I got years ago. Um, 
Black Sabbath, the uh, Born Again, the Unmixed Demos, which okay. is an interesting take. And shortly after buying this, this has the track The Fallen, and which is one of the best tracks on Born Again. I can't believe they left it off. And I actually asked Ian Gillen if that was real. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that was a, a he couldn't remember why it was left off. Um, and of course, I did, you know, it was for the Gillen's in interview. Um, but I just asked whatever Sabbath questions I could. And he just said, that was the greatest year of my life. He's like, I, I just had fun for an entire year. He loved it. Um, this is one. Um, this one doesn't even say it's a double disc. Disc one is uh, Sabbath 1981, which is incorrect because it's all tracks from heaven and hell. And they only played year, they only played England in 1981, if I remember right, for the heaven and hell record. Um, but disc two is says live in the USA 1983 with Ian Gillen. But whatever it is, I don't think it's not a full show, um, but it's kind of cool. This is an old one. I got this probably like 30 years ago. And I think those are the only Ian, those are the only Ian Gillen ones that I, that I have. But I do, I, what, who's, so who's next? It's Tony. Tony Martin. No. no. Well, next, I guess, would be Ray Gillen. Ray Gillen, yeah, if you got any, yeah. Uh, and yet yeah, both of these now technically are negated. Um, because this is Sabbath live at the Hammersmith Odeon, June 2nd, 1986, with Ray Gillen on vocals. Um, and this is one set of the Eternal Idol demos. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this has some of the live tracks from um, Texas that were recording for an, recorded for FM broadcast. And I think, I think all of this stuff was on the the last reissue of the eternal idol pretty sure yeah yeah if i'm not mistaken um this one i got i looked for this one for a long time um but i bought i found it at rock fantasy um this one is called black sabbath archangel rides again and <laughs> you know it's got it's got tony iomi with jethro tull um doing a couple tracks it's got a couple live tracks uh with sabbath um it's got um uh, tony iomi with lita ford doing one of those uh one of those uh tv shows that they did like in 84 but the the real reason for this of course you couldn't you couldn't you could get it easily now but th back then this has junior's eyes which is uh dave walker from savoy brown which is his uh first and only appearance uh, with with Sabbath and it's it's you know Junior's eyes with with different lyrics, um, and that one's that one's a good one. Good uh, singer, not a good fit for Black Sabbath. No, no, that uh, I I don't think I don't think it would have worked. Uh, and then so the next in the chronology uh, would have been um, gee, oh no I I think I did it backwards I forgot this one. Um, this is Sixth Star. This is Jeff Fenholt oh yeah um which is the these are you know um bootlegs i guess or uh, rough rough unfinished versions of some of the songs that would go on to be on on seventh star i remember ye many many years ago my sister coming to me and telling me she saw this guy that was a pastor who said he was in black sabbath and i'm like who who what like I had no idea what she was talking about. Then she bought his book and it was like a pamphlet. And I'm like, you gotta give it to me. I gotta read it. I read the entire thing. He talked about singing in Jesus Christ Superstar. And like literally the last two pages, the guy talked about Black Sabbath as if he had spent some time there and or did some shows, but the guy did nothing other than some, um, some you know demo tracks although it's fascinating because the guy's voice vocally he really reminds me of glenn hughes um so i, I think he would have worked if he didn't get glenn hughes well you, you don't use you don't get the the jesus christ superstar gig unless you got some pipes that's just the way every guy who's absolutely. ever done that has been a really good singer so. absolutely you're you were totally right uh and then this one um this one i mentioned before this is eighth star which was uh the the 19 later released as 
Tony Iommi and Glenn Hughes, the 1996 Depp Sessions, but I'm sure that that was released because this bootleg preceded it and seemed to sell uh, quite well on the uh, on the bootleg circuit. Uh, I got a, I got a couple more, Pete. Should I, should I go over them? Yeah, go for it. Uh, let's see. I thought I had more Tony Martin. I mean, I know I, know I have a, a couple. Um, this one I kind of like. This is, again, this is from the um the tapes there's even what i like is these bootleggers did this with a lot of them they actually put a photo of the bootleg tape that i I guess i shouldn't call it a bootleg but the cassette tape that the girlfriend stole from cozy powell's house and this is a rough mix of uh forbidden and uh, you know because it's rougher it does sound a little better but the songs are still pretty terrible but even though I hate that record, I still had to buy it. Uh, this is one of the newer ones that you and I got. Uh, Headless in Osaka. Really good. And very good recording. Uh, FM recording of the uh, Sabbath on the uh, the Headless uh, Headless Cross Tour. Yeah. And it also says tracks 10 to 14 from 1995. Oh, right, right. So there, yeah, there are a couple yeah. tracks from Forbidden. Yeah. I think this is on... Or some of these tracks are on that six disc box set that I got off Amazon. Okay. This one is a double disc Sabbath Iron Man. This is an old one. Uh, it's from 1994 at the Universal Amphitheater. So this is Sabbath doing a full set from the uh, Cross Purposes tour. And it's, it's really, it's one of the better set lists. It's got Tony Martin singing, um, you know, Time Machine, Into the Void. The Wizard, uh, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. So some really interesting stuff. And again, this was another one. And in, in, uh, Ro- I interviewed Rob Halford quite a few times. I asked him about this and he said, you know, it's, it's kind of a blur, but he said, thank God for the bootlegs because I can go back and revisit it. This is a double disc. It's called Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath and Rob Halford. And it's the a double disc of the two shows that Rob Halford fronted Black Sabbath in uh, 1992, uh, the end of the Dehumanizer tour, which was also the end of the. Um... I need to get that. Yeah, it's it's and there's also um, there was also videos uh, of both shows. One is a pro shot, and one is a uh, uh, a handheld shot from the audience. So yeah, but um, but it's definitely cool to have. And then of course he did do it. I, our, our friend Steve Keeler was there, man. I kicked myself, uh, but they did it in New Jersey as, as a last minute thing. Yeah. And then I, I do have some bootleg DVDs. I don't know if I should go over those. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, these are just random ones. I mean, of course, listen, bootlegs have been available in every format. I would love to know if there were bootlegs on 8-track. Maybe. Not that I've ever heard, but you never Not know. Not that I've ever heard of, but, but who knows. Um, this is Sabbath from Brooklyn, New York in uh 2014 so this is them on the second leg of the 13 tour um there's a it's a um it's an audience shot but it's pretty good it's got under the sun and into the void and you know i liked when they brought back even though bill ward wasn't there i liked when they brought back the rat salad um yeah this is just a generic one this is sabbath from um this is a pro shot from brazil from 1992 on the, um, this is the very beginning of the uh, Dehumanizer tour. And it's interesting because this is the only time, I think, ever, I think it's the worst song on the record, I don't know why it was the single, uh, that Sabbath did TV Crimes. Yeah, I not my that. favorite, yeah, not my favorite from that, yeah. Kind of a stinker and yeah, they dropped it shortly after. Again, this is one that now technically will be negated because I certainly will buy the official release um, this is Black Sabbath in the We Sold Our Souls for Rock and Roll movie. This was the movie uh, directed by Penelope Spheris, who did the um, the Metal Years, the client of Western Civilization. She did this really cool documentary all about the Ozfest, which features a ton of Ozzy and a ton of Sabbath, and it was never released for some reason. Um, and now after, God, how many years, Pete? Uh, almost 20 years it's finally getting released yeah yeah um this one is heartbreaking because um this one i picked up in europe 
This is uh, Sabbath from Moscow, 1989 on the Headless Cross Tour. Uh, it's a pro shot. I think Sabbath did uh, 10 dates in Moscow, Russia in 1989. They played twice a day. And they, they shot several of them. The thing that's heartbreaking is the disc opens up with a trailer for Live Evil, the video. Because apparently somebody was, I don't know if they were legit or not, but they were saying that they were going to release Live Evil as a bootleg. And that, that unfortunately never happened. Uh, and I would, I would pay anything for that. We're never getting it. And uh, my last yeah. boot, yeah, sadly, we could do a whole episode just on, I'm sure at some point we'll do a live evil or mob rules or something. Uh, this is, this one is Sabbath. It's called, just called Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. This one is good. One. Where the hell is this one? Oh yeah. This is a pro shot from Castle Donington, 19, uh, two, 2005. Uh, I saw them on this tour, not in, in England. I saw them in, uh, in, in Belgium. Uh, with with my buddy Frank White, but this is cool. You know, I I always like when it's a, it's a, it's a full show and it's a complete show. This one was was cool because they did Sleeping Village. They brought that one back. Oh wow! After, uh, after a long time, but yeah, I think that's that's all the stuff that I I pulled. Um, I have tons more. I'm sure I have duplicates of some that I, I don't I don't even remember, Pete. You know how it is. If you go and you put you, you get all of them together and you start looking at them, oh, I yeah. guarantee you have plenty of duplicates. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You got to really be careful when you're buying these. You should it's be true. easily just buy the same shows over and over and over again, not realize it till you start really looking carefully at them. You're like, oh shit, this geez, I got three of these. Damn it. <laughs> they're they're under different names, different titles, wrong pictures. But, um, you know, the, like I said, for, for a lot of it, even, even today, you know, this is the only way to hear, you know, full shows from, from certain lineups or, or even just this, the few recordings that there are from, uh, from certain, uh, certain vocalists that, that were, were with Sap. I'm still hoping that the Ron Keel demos will, will turn up or that the uh, David Donato from David White Donato, Donato, his, his, his demos will turn up. And I know there was one rehearsal uh, with Burton C. Bell from Fear Factory. That was just a live impromptu thing that they were warming up for. And Ozzy didn't want to do a rehearsal, so they needed somebody to sing, so he did it. So there, there's still stuff that out there. That would be there. cool, like one release with all the rehearsal stuff from all the singers that didn't make it into the band, right? Right. You no, know all those tapes are out there somewhere, right? For sure. And, you know, mentioning Deep Purple, I don't know what it is. You know, Deep Purple is great with releasing like live stuff and unreleased stuff. And it just seems like Tony Iommi has a strong aversion to it. And also we should say there was that legal precedent a few years ago where Sharon Osbourne does have a piece of Black Sabbath and legally Black Sabbath is not allowed to release any new music which includes previously unreleased music, unless it's three, if I, I could have this wrong, unless it's three quarters of the original lineup. So like, I know people keep asking about this Tony Martin box set. I want it too, but unfortunately it's not gonna have any songs we haven't heard before because of this. It makes sense. That's why there was um, Jeff Nichols's stepson released with that song slap back yeah which was a rehearsal song for heaven and hell and he posted it on youtube and tony iomi apparently quickly sent him a de de cease and de a cease and desist and he, he had other songs too but unfortunately that's part of the whole um legal precedent you, you can't put anything out Thankfully, we got to hear that because I think what I've had a week that was taken down. Yes, it was fairly quickly. I know I I heard it the first day or two when I went up there, and I was like, "Ah, oh, this is interesting." And then, oh, me, absolutely. And and to me, this we never would have gotten the Fallen, which is an unreleased Black Sabbath song. You know, if it wasn't before that. Yeah. So thankfully, we got that under the wire. Yeah. But like, it would have been great to hear any unreleased tracks from heaven and hell and the mob rules recordings but 
unfortunately now we'll we'll never unless Sharon Osborne can get paid off we'll we'll never get that stuff Tony's not paying her off no no and listen everybody's getting so old and yeah but hey we've got plenty of bootlegs and who knows on the bootleg market what could turn up I'm still shocked that shows from 1969 are surfacing awesome. Yeah, well, just got to keep your eyes open. They, these That's it. Every so often, when you least expect it, boom. Yeah. Like, like I know, you got to jump on them quick. And I know KISS fans lately have been getting a ton of bootleg videos that are, that were previously unreleased that are just popping up on YouTube. So, yeah, who yeah. knows? Who knows what the future will bring? Yeah, so we'll see. And who knows what the future will bring for the next episode of the Sabbath Stone. So uh, <laughs> uh, what I would recommend folks do is in the comments, if there's any specific topics relating to Black Sabbath you'd love for Chris and I to tackle in the uh, months ahead, put some ideas down below. We, we've got some stuff that we're kind of brewing on our side, but uh, we'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, remember, this is all about Black Sabbath and Black Sabbath related stuff. So um, we're happy to talk about it and because there's nothing we like talking more about than That's our band of all time right so absolutely cool so thanks for watching everybody uh this is on the web at www.ctranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn time please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as a post and please do hit the like button before you leave stay tuned tomorrow for ranking the albums uh tuesday we've got in the prog seat mike portnoy is coming back on the channel we're going to talk about and we're going to do an album study of the very first Dream Theater album, When Dream and Day Unite. And Mike is going to help us out on that. So it'll be great to have Mike back on the show again now that he is back in Dream Theater once again. And uh, all sorts of more stuff happening during the week. And uh, Chris and I will be back on uh, Hudson Valley Squares in about a week and a half. So, uh, and of course, and Monsters Den. Yeah, exactly. So all sorts of stuff coming. So uh, till then, for Chris Alloway and P. Parle, thanks for watching the inaugural episode of The Sabbath Stones. We'll see you back here in about a month for more Black Sabbath discussion. Till then, have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.